morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, can, can we just start off by give, giving each other a round of applause for signing up for college? Okay. This is pretty exciting stuff. It might, it might feel like it or not uh, because you're still in high school, but you really are. You know, as Mr. Chang mentioned, this is a college class, so super exciting stuff. Um, for the first 10 minutes, if I, if I can just have your attention, so no uh, no devices, no computers. Uh, I promise I'm going to leave you alone for 10 minutes to get, get working on this. Uh, but I do need your undivided attention to uh, make sure that I'm highlighting the important steps that you need to complete for, for this uh, registration. So um, that's what we'll do, right? First 10 minutes, I'll review the slides, uh, and then I'll leave you the rest of the time to work on your application. Uh, right before I wrap up, so I, I'm going to ask for your attention again for the last five minutes. So I can walk you through the second step um, of the registration, which we will not be able to complete today because you'll learn that there's a bit of a lag between the, the two steps. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, and then, yeah, I, I promise I'll make this uh, brief. So um, you all have access to the slide deck. Um, I just wanted to put together a table of contents so you know kind of what to expect for each slide. Um, it'll make it easier to navigate all the 30 different uh, slides that are part of this deck. Um, in a nutshell, I know there's a lot of wording here, uh, but I'll summarize it for you. There's two steps that you need to complete, right, to officially become a, a dual enrollment student, right? So there is the CPP Apply um, application. It's an online application. Um, it's an uh, application. Um, you're gonna hear me say application probably like a hundred times. So just hopefully, hopefully you don't get tired of me. Um, it is a system-wide application, meaning that every single every single community college in California um, uses this application. Um, so you'll notice that. Some of the questions apply to you, others don't. Uh, so just be patient with it and and um, um, and I promise you'll get through it. Uh, so that's step number one. Uh, the second one is an Adobe signed form um, that needs to be signed by both one of your parents, uh, your parent or legal guardian. Uh, and then it also gets signed by Ms. Morelli. Uh, this form basically gives you consent as a, they give you consent as a, a high school student to take college classes, right? Um, so it's basically then signing off on saying, um, what's your name? Uh, sorry, which on the spot? Gavin. What is it? Gavin. Gavin? Yeah. So it's basically saying, right, like uh, Miss Morelli and your parent are saying, uh, I give Gavin permission to take photography four with uh, photography five with Mr. Chang uh, and for him to get college credit. So that's pretty much all it is. Um, it is an Adobe sign process. So you'll kind of get familiar with what that looks like um, as we kind of move forward, move through the guide. So again, summarize two steps, uh, but you'll know that there's, you'll find out that there's little steps. Uh, in the two big steps. Uh, has anyone taken a, a college class before? A dual enrollment class? Are y'all the first time? So can we get another, maybe another round of applause? <laughs> first time, all right, I, I like this. Uh, so obviously this process will be completely new to you all. Uh, so we can kind of glide through this uh, slide because this will not apply to you. Um, to get you started with the CCT apply, these are some of the, informa some of the information that you need. Um, so if you have a social security number and you have it with you, uh, you will need to report that. Um, obviously, if you don't have one due to your legal status or documented status, um, that's fine. Uh, students can take classes with us regardless of their legal status, so that's not a that's not a barrier there. Um, I would say definitely uh, run this by your parents. Um, if they don't feel comfortable sharing it, that's also okay. Um, not the best practice, uh, but you can also submit your application without entering your social security number. Um, uh, personal email address. Um, I, is anybody a senior here, or are we all senior? Okay. So this will definitely apply to you. It, it kind of applies to the rest of you, but uh, definitely for you. Um, uh, use your personal email account because uh, as you can imagine, once you graduate from Mountain View, you're not gonna have access to your MBLA email address, right? That, that account will get discontinued. Um, so it's super important that you have, that you are providing a personal account because you'll be able to access that for, you know, for the rest of your life for, for however long it, you know, however long you wanna have access to that. Um, so super important for the rest of you, if you want to use your MBLA, that, that's fine. But just know that once you get to your senior year, uh, you, you should uh, definitely change it. Um, you will be, be reporting your English and math grades for, from last year. So those of you that are juniors, you'll, you'll be saying what you got for English and math. Um, and you know, right, like right, sophomores, freshmen and so on and so forth. Um, don't worry, this does not impact you in any way, right? Like you're still gonna, you're still gonna get accepted. You're still gonna take four to five, uh, but it is information that you have to provide in, in that application. Well, uh, there are freshmen, do they, they report their school? There's an option in there that will say I'm a, I'm a freshman or, or lower grade. And then, um, I think it, and then it prevents them from providing like grades for English and math. Um, or they'll just say, I took a class that's ninth grade math or lower uh, self-reporting self-reporting yeah so um you should have access to your unofficial transcript through um was it Aries. Aries. um 
And again, uh, if you can pull that up, uh, definitely do that. If it's taking too long, uh, you can also just give it your best. Try to be as accurate as possible. But again, if you're not super accurate, it's also not going to, you know, we're not going to mark you down for any of that. So um, just want to put that out there. I'm going to skip through these or kind of glide to these because you do have access to this guide again. But this is kind of where you get started. Foothill.id slash apply. Uh, you go to apply now. Uh, all of you are going to be creating an account for the first time uh, since since you haven't taken a dual enrollment class in the past. Um, very standard, right? Like uh, creating an account situation. You enter your email address. They're going to ask you to verify that. They'll send you a code. You look for that code in your email account. You, you enter that. Um, as you're creating your CC Apply uh, profile, uh, it's kind of three steps there, right? It's your contact info, personal info, and credentials. Uh, super important when you create your password, I uh, just save it somewhere, uh, especially if you're not using your uh, your personal device. So if you're going to be using these laptops or not laptops, desktops, um, uh, definitely save that password somewhere, right? Like pull out your phone or uh, notes. Uh, if you're old school and you want to write it down, you can also do that. Uh, but you are going to be using that password again, right? This I promise you this is not the last time you're going to uh, need to get in here. So um, just uh, best practice to kind of get in the habit of doing that. Uh, you'll start a new application. Um, something I want to highlight um, that's uh, that confuses students a lot. Um, so when they ask you for what term you're applying for, you're actually saying summer uh, and not fall. Um, I know that this is fall semester for you all, uh, but for us, uh, Foothill, Foothill College is in the quarter system, right? Meaning that our fall quarter doesn't actually start until September 25th, right? So because your class starts today, uh, it, we just have to categorize it as a as a summer class. Uh, so super technical information that you don't have to memorize, but it, that's just how our scheduling works. Um, so when you get to that question, uh, again, just select summer uh, and please do not select fall. Um, and then uh, when you get to oops, when you get to your enrollment status, uh, right here. When you get to your enrollment status, just say that you're enrolling in high school or lower grade at, in college at the same time. Again, once you read that aloud and once you see it here, like you're like, yep, that's me. That, that's what I should select. Uh, but sometimes it, uh, students end up selecting something different, um, and and we obviously don't want that. Um, so just wanted to point those out. Um, you'll kind of, you'll see a, a progress kind of bar on the left side of the page. It'll tell you, um, right. Like as you're completing each, sec each section, it'll give you a check mark. Um, so you'll know kind of where you are in the application. Uh, super important. Once you finally submit, uh, which should take you about maybe 30, 40 minutes, uh, you'll get this confirmation page. Uh, please email that to me, uh, to this email address, fhd1enrollment at fhda.edu. Um, that way we just kind of have records and if something happens with your application, I can work with our admissions office to, to make sure I help you troubleshoot. Um, nine times out of 10, how many of you are here? Four, seven, we have seven, seven, right? So I'll just, if I had to do like statistics or just kind of give out numbers, like maybe like five of you, your application is gonna be fine, nothing happens. But then maybe two of you, um, something funky happens with your application and I have to work with our admissions office to, um, to make sure I get that um, uh, sorted out. So. Probably every, all you need to memorize here is that you take that screenshot and you send it to me, and I promise you we will be um, we'll be good. Um, and then once you after you're done submitting, right? Like you're gonna submit, uh, you send me that confirmation page. Um, within 48 hours, you're gonna get a welcome email from our admissions office. Uh, the most important thing that you need to take away from this email is that it has your Foothill student ID. We call it campus wide ID. Uh, we also shorten it and just call it CW ID. Um, super important because this is going to be your key to not only accessing the form that you have to complete as a second step, but also it has, you all have access to everything really related to Foothill, right? So all, all of our programs, all of our services, um, that are both happening online, that are happening in person, uh, this is really your key or your password if you want to call it to being able to uh, tap into all of that. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that more in detail, uh, maybe some other time. Uh, but I will say just once you get that welcome email, just make sure to save down that, uh, CWID. Um, and I would even push you even extra further to memorize it because again, uh, it is going to be a super important number to know. Um, so I'm going to stop here, uh, and then uh, again, I'm gonna we're gonna do some work time, and then uh, in the last five minutes, I'm gonna review the second step. Um, but I will also provide some context and let you know that again, because this does take about 48 hours. For most of you, it's not gonna take the 48 hours, right? Like you'll 